when you align two things, you say, well, I'm just going to put as many gaps as I can to make. But there has to be a fine line between putting a gap so that you can align things properly versus overusing gaps. And that's one of the reasons why you have this notion of saying, well, if you if you align two things or several things with each other, there has to be a score that will tell you, OK, this this is a numerical value which will tell you, hey, the score, this is a better score. It's a better alignment. Uh, this is not so good because the score is not so good. And in order for that alignment to take place, you're going to introduce gaps. But in order to be very careful as to what gaps you introduce and why you introduce them, you have what are called gap penalties. OK, that means it, it kind of is a is a bit of a caution saying, be very careful why you align gaps. Sometimes it might be better to have a mismatch than just put gaps all over the place to align. And remember, once again, gaps are not nature. Gaps is something we do in order so, we, so that so we can understand evolutionary consequence a little better. OK, so what are the different ways you can score this? One is called the constant score, where you can say that if you have a gap, no matter how long the gap is, irrespective of the size of the gap, I'm just going to give it a negative score. So let's say I had two sequences, A, T, T, C, G, T, C, A, and something a lot smaller, and I want to align them. And I say, OK, I'm going to align them. I'm going to put a gap here, and I am going to put a gap here. But for my C, A to match, I'm going to have to put essentially three, three gaps here. This illustration is not very clear. It really should be three gaps. I'm going to put three gaps here. OK, and you say, well, I have uh, I have. But because I don't care about the length of the gap. So I say I've got a gap here that's negative one. I've got a gap here that's negative two. Again, I don't care about the length of the gap. So that's two. And four of these are matching. So for each of them, I'm going to give a score of one. So the score is two. Now, alternatively, you could have said, well, I can move this T here, so I have only one gap of four. Or I can move this T, this T here, so I have a gap of four. And because we don't care of the length of the gap, we just say it's one, and we could have had a better score. So again, remember, this is a construct that we introduce in order to make sure that our alignment strategies are sound. Okay, That's the constant one. And you can say, well, I can do better than this. So then you say, I'm going to put a little more rigor into my scoring. And you have what's called the linear score, where you say the length of each insertion or deletion is given an additional negative score because you're now measuring the you're now measuring an additional negative score. If, for example, if the length increases. OK, so you'll say, well, I'm going to have a negative one. It's the same sequences. So if I have a negative one here, I'm going to say, because there's one more gap, I'm going to give it another negative one. But because this gap is greater than one, irrespective of how long it is, I'm going to give it a greater, I'm going to give it a greater penalty. And so you say there's negative one, and there is a negative, negative one, negative two, and that's negative three, and therefore that's a score of one. Okay. Again, you could have placed this T here and just given it a score of saying that because there's a gap, you give it negative one. But because that gap is greater than one, you give it a negative Look two. Look at and that's a the slightly other. more complicated, a little more involved, not complicated so much, an involved definition of what a gap penalty is. Now, in the previous slide, we looked at linear and constant. Constant was a little more simplistic. Linear was a little more challenging. Let's look at what is called the affine or affine gap penalty. And the affine gap penalty is identified with a formula A plus B L minus 1. So A is the gap opening penalty. Now remember, I've reminded you and I will continue to remind you in this series of modules that a gap is a human construct. It doesn't really occur in nature, right? So we have to be very aware of how, why we just apply gaps just to make things easy for us. But that does not necessarily mean that there is any validity to it, right? There is no validity to it. It is a human construct. 
And therefore, in order to be judicious in term, when we start applying gaps, we call it a gap opening penalty. Okay. Uh, this pen, uh, this uh, particular formula also allows for the gap extension penalty. So in this case, it's one, and L is the length of the gap. So we are, here we have an example taken from the resource Rosalind.info. Now plus two for matching and plus one for mismatches. Here you will see you have the matches P R T. Uh, then there's no really mismatch. It's just that in order for that E, I, and N to be matched, we are going to introduce a gap, and then there is another gap here. Okay, so let's see how we can calculate some of this. Let's start dealing with, before we worry about the matches, uh, and remember I said here that the matches are possible but not applicable here. There's a mismatch which is possible but not applicable here. Let's begin let's begin to understand how some of this works. Now let's deal first of all with the penalties, right, where, where the eventual score is negated. So you look at the matches, then you subtract the scores from the mismatches, and then you subtract, then you subtract the score from the penalties. Okay, so uh, let's say I have a penalty here, and so because it's the beginning of a gap. I have a gap opening penalty and here I've used 11. Now you can use such penalties, you know, they're not necessarily arbitrarily, arbitrarily brought about. These numbers are, uh, they're, they're reasonable, okay? So let's say there's a gap opening penalty here of 11. And so I have a negative 11, that's A. And B, I say, is it's a gap extension. Now, because this penalty is, is associated with a gap extension, I give it a score of 1 because the gap is extended by 3. So B, in this case, is 1. And what is the length of the gap? The length of the gap is 3, 1, 2, and 3. So 3, mi uh, three minus 1 is 2 times 1. Okay. And remember, the, the entire number is negative. So it's negative, the gap penalty. So that's ne ne 11 plus 2, because B is 1, L is 3 minus 1 is 2. So, And so the score there is negative 13. Now, there is another gap here. And so for that, we have actually have a gap opening penalty. The B is 1, but it's not an extended gap because L, which is the length of the gap, is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, and therefore the gap here is negative 11. So the total gap is negative 24. Okay? Now, we've cal used the affine gap penalty, but here's another. This is an introduction of something, something a slightly different. Uh, remember I said that you know, this is a plus two for matching, plus one for mismatches. We say there's gaps here, so we've gotten a score of negative 24. If we say there are one, two, three, four, five, six matches, which gives us a score of plus 12, then that's what we're looking for. But that's really not what we're looking for in this case. And let's move on a little bit ahead. So that's a gap of, that's a gap penalty of negative 24 for this. And that is where that number goes. Okay. Now, the score for the matches is 32. Clearly, just by saying plus 2 for matches, which will be plus 12, which would give us a total score of something negative, negative 12, wouldn't work. So the question is, how do we get this number 32? Now remember, these are, this is an actual protein, okay, or a, or a peptide, and it consists of amino acids, right? So proline, arginine, threonine, tryptophan, proline, serine, glutamic acid, isoleucine, and asparagine, and serine, right, which is associated with the gap here. In a true sense, what are the, what are the scores associated with, if you take, for example, a family of proteins, what would be the score associated with proteins matching with proteins? What is the score of, for example, in a family of proteins of a proline matching with a proline, an arginine matching with an arginine, threonine matching with a threonine, etc. 
And so since this is a real polypeptide, we are going to look at matching numbers, mismatching numbers that arise from calculations made by a real family of proteins. Okay. And that is why we ask the question, why 32? And this is what is called the Blossom matrix. Okay. And we will look at Blossom matrices two or three modules from now. So this is a Blossom 62 matrix, uh, and 62 has a certain significance, which we will discuss in a later module. Okay, but now let's look at our sequence. This is exactly what we have. And so then we say, well, proline matching a proline. And this is where these scores are calculated. And these scores are calculated from doing a real sequence analysis, a sequence comparison of a whole family and determining the likelihoods of when is a proline matched with a proline, when is a proline not matched with a proline, okay? And the 62 is really a measure of what percentage overall, it's a measure of the overall similarity of, of the proteins within that family, okay? So, if there is a mismatch in that family, when all the family that all the members, all the protein members of the family are aligned, what is the likelihood, for example, of a of an of an alanine interacting with a with a serine, okay, or with a sorry with a cysteine, a an alanine interacting with a cysteine or an aspartic acid or a glutamic acid, but let's look at the matches here and see how we get the score. So, for example, the proline matching with a proline, so you see proline matching with a proline has a score of 7, okay? An arginine matching with an arginine has a score of 5. A threonine matching with a threonine has a score of 5. And then these are gaps. We've already accounted for that in the calculation of the gap penalty. And then you have a glutamic acid interacting with a glutamic acid, which has a score of 5 in the matching. And isoleucine matching with an isoleucine has a score of 4 and an asparagine matching with an asparagine has a score of 6. Okay, now we have, we have to make sure we keep this into account. So we had a 75554 plus 6 which is actually a 32. So that is where you get that number from 32. So the total score therefore is, the scoring for this match is 8.